Hello, fellow students. On this fine day, where it's currently 20, 28 degrees in my apartment, Jesus Christ, um, I want to dive in to and break down some of the techniques that Blob uses in his paintings. This isn't gonna be a 7 or 10 minute <laughs> biggie how, how to draw yaoi hands and senpai eyes or it's just me telling you Blob is really good at light lighting <laughs> because the um, I'll be covering some more important stuff um, stuff that's actually going to make you better at art understanding what actually happens um, in his paintings uh, and depending on your skill level you know you might already know some of this but who knows maybe you'll be surprised uh, or maybe you'll end up educating me <laughs> um, let's look into it if you watch to the end of the video I'll have a little surprise a little gift for you, my friend. So I hope you watch till the end. I really think it might be useful for you if you're a beginner or someone, um, someone, someone, who, someone who knew none of this beforehand. Um, right. You can tell by his images. I'm just gonna give you a few examples here. You can tell by those that he's using a lot of reflected and atmospheric light, um, and uh, this is what everyone else who's ever done a video on his side will tell you as well um but you know what does that what does that actually mean right like what does that mean um so let's try to break it down Blob has a great understanding of well everything but especially light and the phenomenon called atmospheric light which is light reflected from the atmosphere to the surface of the to the s <laughs> oh my god, I cannot speak today. Which is light reflected from the atmosphere to the surface of the object that isn't facing a light source. Uh, that's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> so you might want to digest that one. Reflected light happens in core light areas as well, but then typically just not powerful enough to be visible at all in those fields. So having it as a rule of thumb that reflected light only happens away from the, cores, from the core light areas, uh, that works alright. Um, let me demonstrate. So, let's make ourselves a little cube, because, uh, cube. And we're gonna put him right there. Oh, well, that's a very dark cube, hold on. Right now, this is, uh, right now this is just a circle, right? Um, it has no volume, it's not 3D, it's just a 2D shape on a white space. So, how do we make this cube 3D? Um, well, we uh, we have to describe the form using the light sources around it. And um, the first thing you want to do when you do this is decide a, um, a direction for your light source. You have to decide where the light is coming from. Um, that you can, I mean... You can do anything pretty much. You can have a light source down here coming up. You can have a light source you know, here. Um, I mean, the light source will be here, hitting here, right? But you know, you can put it wherever you want, essentially. Um, oh, there. Uh, I'm just gonna switch to color mode real quick. <laughs> Why is it not in color mode? There you go. Okay. So. I mean, for the simplicity of it, I'm just gonna do sort of like a top-down sort of lighting because um, that's what daylight is like, that's what's natural, it's easier to work with. So um, I'm just gonna take my soft brush and sort of like do like that. You see like that? I mean, suddenly, I mean, it's not perfect, this is not how I would normally do it, but it's just to demonstrate the fact that now it has a volume. Now it's 3D, it's facing a light source, and it be, it's behaving in a way that a cube in reality would, you know, reflecting light source. Um, but uh, you, have to, you also have to consider the fact that the closer a surface is to the light source, the stronger the reflected light will be. So this this here, right? This area, it like we have the cube here, and this is the part that's facing the light. So this area right here, oh, like that, is closer to the light source than this area, right? 
the light source is up here, but this area of the cube is further away than this area, right? So that means that the closer we get to the light source, the stronger the light will be at this point right here. So I'm sort of going to add a fading effect to the cube. Uh, where it gets stronger at the center of where the light source is hitting. Why is it not working? Oh, like that, sorry. Uh, what am I doing? Right. So, now you can see that it's sort of fading. It's getting more powerful at where it's facing the light source right here. And then sort of fading away as it gets to the terminator line. The terminator line is where the surface of the object starts facing away from the light source, right? So the light source is up here and you have to imagine that from the surface of the cube there's all of these tiny arrows going up. And the more the more the arrow meets the air, like the more it goes like this to the light source, the powerful, more powerful the light will be. I mean, this just means re it's reflected. These arrows meeting each other meets means that the light is reflected. Um, and the terminator line happens when these arrows start pointing away from the light source. So you can have this and still have a slight bit of light. I mean, 90, 90 degrees, you'll still have a slight bit of light. But the second the arrows start pointing away, that's when the terminator line happens. And the terminator line would be halfway across the cube, sort of like this, because, you know, that's when the arrows start pointing downwards. That's halfway across the cube. The, the, little, <laughs> the cube. Uh, why, why did I say cube? What the fuck? What's wrong with me? That's just, that's a, that's a, it's a sphere, right? Yeah, it's called a sphere. So we have a terminator line for where the shadow area happens. This is really difficult. I'm so, so I'm so sorry. <laughs> I always struggle with this. I mean, usually the terminator line is supposed to be slightly visible. Um, it's like it's not just a big blur. Where it just like you know, all right. So this is all right. You can you can see the line like right here. It's a bit blurry because it's not like, it's not an edge, it's a curving surface, but you know, you can tell that it's there, which is important. It's not supposed, your terminator line shouldn't look like this. <laughs> That's not what your terminator line should look like because it, you know, it messes up the, the structure of the object. I mean, it depends on what you're drawing, right? But I hope you get the point. If you have a, if your terminator line isn't there, if it isn't distinct, that means that this isn't happening. Like this rule here. If your terminator line is like gone, if it's not there, that means you're not respecting this rule. And um, if you want to draw realism, if you want to draw realistic, imaginary realism, you have to respect the rules of science, of physics. Um, so yeah. <laughs> science kids okay so i'm just gonna make it a, a bit more pronounced just for the sake of dem what i'm about to demonstrate i mean you can find studies of these um you can find 3d models that are gonna be um, a bit more useful i think than than like this but you know Just gonna fix it up a bit. All right. 
And this is where it gets interesting, because now I'm about to introduce you to the phenomenon called atmospheric light. So, let's assume that the light source here is the sun. Um, because you'll most likely be painting with mostly sun as a light source, maybe some torches, I don't, I don't know, depending on <laughs> what kind of illustrator you're going to be, but this is the sun, right? The, right now the cube exists in a vacuum, um, but but in the real world, you know, um, like, all right, so this is the world, there's some trees, um, there's a house, um, and this is the sun. And the sun, the light of the sun comes down and hits objects, but it also, that light that hits these these objects is also going to bounce back and um, you can assume for example like if you have a tree here oh that's a bad example wait a minute if you have a tree right here and the light of the sun goes down on the house like this this light is going to bounce and be reflected on this tree right here at least um, like at least a little bit. It's a good thing to keep out. It's not always gonna happen. Reflected light is a bit. Um, it's a big come and go. Um, there's there's a lot of elements to it, and it's best to use references to study it. But this is the principle that Blob understands so well. This is the reflected light because he has a lot of it in his pictures. The way, the way reflected light would behave on this cube is assume. I mean, reflected light needs something to bounce off of to happen, right? So if we put like a table or something, put a table beneath the cube, light hits the table, and it bounces back at the cube on the back side of it right here. So the light hits here. Oh, sorry. Um, the light hits here, and here, and here. It hits the entire surface, and then it bounces back right there. So at the uh, edge of the cube, we're going to see some reflect, some little <laughs> reflected light. Just like that. Don't overdo it, be careful overdoing it, um, because the table isn't as powerful a light source as the sun itself, right? So it's just it's just a bit, not too much, just a bit. Just gonna check, and it seems good. Alright. Now that we've covered that, I'm gonna take you back to some of Lop's pictures. I think um, I think one of the best ways to demonstrate what he understands happens um, when he when he paints uh, sunsets, um, because painting the sunset. Uh, well, first of all, it. Um, if you paint it um, during the golden hour, as it's called in photography, then you're then you're like utilizing the fact that there's warms and cools happening in nature at the same time, and that's extremely useful when you're painting because um, combining warm tones and cool tones um, um, can sort of help you create nice contrast, create focal points, uh, create a nice sort of variety and. Um, it can give some life and depth to your picture if you use it right. So we're gonna take a look at one of his pictures here. Let me just find it. Hold on. All right. So here in this picture, you can see that um, he actually shows you this clear as day. You've got all this blue light up here, all of this blue around her, surrounding her, which is what comes through on her skin, along her arms, right here, on her face, on her shoulder. 
um, on her collarbone, in her hair, on the dress, um, in her surroundings. I mean, this railing is also catching a lot of that blue. Um, and this because like you have a light source over here is what I think he's telling me, and that or if the, that that light comes down, hitting here, hitting here. But then there's also atmospheric light up in this corner, which is also coming down, hitting here, right? It's because the blue of the sky emits light as well. It's not a lot, it's not as powerful as the sun, which is important to remember. But the rest of the sky has, has an atmosphere, it has atmospheric light, so, which you have to consider. And that's what he's bringing in from up here to down there. That's what he's telling us. It's that the rest of the sky up here, even though the light source is over here, hitting here, the rest of the atmosphere is still, it's still affecting her as well, which is what happens in real, in real life, which is why his images are so realistic, right? Um, let me take another one. This one, this one is perfect. Ah, help! <laughs> What's happening? Like that, all right, this one, right? You have all of the, you have the light source over here, which is the sun, which is hitting the front of her body. We can't see that, but that's what it does. There's a rim light here describing that. Now, what he understands, and that's extremely important is this picture because it's so prevalent, is that even though the light source is over there, there's light behind her too that we don't see as a viewer because the rest of the sky is behind her, right? That's still emitting light. That's where all of this blue is coming from. That's where all of this dark atmospheric light is coming from. Like these blue two, these blue hues, they aren't from over here where the light source is. They're from behind her where the sky is slowly turning blue because that's how the horizon reacts. That's how the sky reacts when the sun is slowly setting. That's what happens in the golden hour. Um, I, have a, I have a perfect image to, to actually demonstrate this for you too, that I found when I studied this. Here you can see an example of how that actually happens in the real world. Um, this picture right here. Uh, hold on. This picture right here. You can see the rim light sort of catching um, like the corner of a silhouette. Um, which is like her back is probably gonna be extremely warm, extremely saturated because the light is just hitting her directly on her back. But her front, which is facing away from the light, which is facing the red rest of the atmosphere, like because her, the front of her is facing away from the light source, the atmosphere gets to do whatever it wants. And that's where all of these very cooler tones compared to the rest is coming from. Like these are much paler. Um, I mean, you can tell Vlob kind of did an exaggeration. It's a caricature of what happens in real life, but it's still following the rules and that's why it still looks good and it still looks realistic, even though it's an exaggeration of it. Um, let me find another one. Um, I had a really good one. Hold on. There's also some, like, it's also happening here. There's blue happening here as well on her face. Um, like she's facing away from the light source, which would then saturate her right here. But you have blues and grays and really pale skin tone colors on her face, which is facing the race, which is facing the rest of the atmosphere. So when her face is facing away from the light source, the atmosphere again, as we can see, it that's what takes over. And that doesn't mean that if, if like if the sky is blue, then you should just paint a blue alien. That's not what it means. It just means you have to bring in those kind of hues, those kind of um, you have to bring in those hues. I mean, this one is extremely edited, but you can still see a little bit of the blue of the atmosphere right there on her nose, um, on her back right there. This blue on her shirt too. I mean, white, white. Uh, white as a fabric, white as a color, absorbs a lot of color. So, you know, if the sky's blue, the white is gonna absorb that blue like hell. Um, but skin is a little more subtle. You have to be a little more subtle with skin, but it's still the same principle that counts. <laughs> oh, this made me laugh. It's so commercial. Oh god. Oh my god, this one is perfect. Look at all that blue coming in.
Look at that. Look at all that blue on her face. I mean, it's probably edited as well, but... Look at all that blue in her skin as it mixes with this, um, with the light, this extremely yellow golden light. I mean, this is what he understands. It's that the rest of the blue up here is still affecting the skin down here. It's that the entire atmosphere, the world around the subject has, a, has, has an enormous part in defining how you're supposed to paint it with what kind of color, with what kind of light. That's what he understands so good. I found this really good one. I'm not gonna give up on it. I don't care. It was so perfect. I mean, it's happening here as well. You can see some of all this color sort of being burrowed into the skin at certain areas. Um, like, um, you know, yeah, all of this color bloop, down to the skin. A lot of blue in his silhouette. I mean, this isn't ski only skin, there's also clothes, but blue on his on his silhouette because the light source um the light source behind us behind us as a viewer the sky is blue behind us as a viewer and that's blending into his silhouette the rest of him is facing the light source is sort of catching that gold oh my god this is really annoying where was it i found it it was so good all right screw it i'm gonna go into my history um <laughs> close your eyes kids <laughs> There, th it's this one. It's different. It's, it's, it's this one. It's this one. <laughs> Look at all of that saturation in his skin, on his face right there. That's facing the light, and then we have the Terminator line right here. It's so obvious. It's so clear that this is the side of the face that's facing away, and that's catching all of that blue in the sky. The deep hues of blue, the light blues of hue, a few places. This is. Like it's probably edited a bit again, but it's still it's still displaying it's still demonstrating the rules so clearly of how light behaves. This is what you need to be doing. This is what I need to be doing. <laughs> Why am I not doing this better? Oh. Now that I've demonstrated for you, I think it's time to move on to actually a painting demonstration, maybe. So uh moving on. Alright, so let's return to the cube. I demonstrated the whole value thing for you, but now we're gonna do it again and apply the color we just learned about. So we had. Why do I keep saying cube? Oh my god! <laughs> I don't know what's happening with me. I don't know what it is. Alright, but we're adding our light source like that. Like that. Happy, happy light source. Alright, perfect. Now what do we do? So let's say that this this ball, this sphere, let's say that it's made of skin, right? I'm just gonna take a skin color. I'm opening my color palette right now, but you can't see that because recorder is not getting that. Um, but let's say that it's made of skin. Looks silly now, hold on. Hold your horses. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna fix it. Don't worry. <laughs> right, so this is extremely. Uh, yeah, something like that, right? Um, I'm gonna make it a little bit more believable. Hold on, I can do better than that. <laughs> um, hold on. So now we have a sphere that's made of skin. The skin of virgins, preferably, but... Let's keep things civil. All right. So right now it looks okay, right? I mean, it's a ball. It's made of skin. Maybe there's some blood beneath it, so there's some sort of bread coming through, right? Oh, that's too much. Like right here, there's some red showing the. There's actually blood, blood within it. 
Um, and gonna bring in the light source again. Like that. Alright, so this is extremely quickly rendered. Um, please don't murder me. Um, but this is made of skin, right? Looks fine. Looks fine. It's a ball of skin in a white <laughs> void of nothingness. What happens if we... Like, let's say that this, the atmosphere around the skin suddenly turned twilight blue. I'm just gonna fix it, but you can already tell that it looks horrible. It's like... It looks unrealistic, like it's not fitting, like it looks like it's, it's, it's a, like, um, oh, what's it called, um, sticker art, it looks like it's a clip art, it's just kind of been stickered into this canvas. Um, I'm just gonna make it a little bit more better for you, hold on. Please don't crash for the show. <laughs> Please don't crash. Please don't crash. Thank you. Like that. Alright, so... There's a bit of atmosphere going on now. Um, maybe this is a bit brighter at the horizon line. sort of like this and then it gets sort of darker as we go across the sky um, because the top of the sky is always a bit darker than the horizon um, aspects of the sky all right oh god oh i'm testing you photoshop i can i can feel it i'm testing you <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> Now we have some of that blue up there. Um, so you can tell immediately this ball is extremely out of its element. Like, what is he doing there? He's not supposed to be there kind of vibe, you know? <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply everything we just learned and apply it onto the cube. So all of that blue we see, we're gonna bring it in. As a reflected light. Oh god. <laughs> Not saturation, color mode, god damn it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so as we just learned, this part is facing the light source, so that's not gonna be as affected by the rest of the atmosphere. So it's just gonna be everything beyond the terminator. So we're just gonna take the terminator and just chill in some blue in there. I mean, this blue here, because he's facing the light up here. There's also an area facing the green. So that's gonna catch some green. And there's some yellow down here, some greens in the sky. In case you didn't know, there's green in the sky sometimes. I've seen it, it's there. It happens when the yellows mixes with the blues. Then there's green in the sky. So already now you can tell... Sort Already now this cube looks like infinitely more like it belongs here um. <laughs> just gonna fix him a bit so makes him a nice a nice proud cube I am a proud cube oh my god I keep doing it I keep doing it I said cube again I don't know why I'm doing it I think I'm cursed Somebody help me. Oh god. Alright. We added some color of the atmosphere now. We, we we respected the atmosphere, we gave it some credit, and brought it into the subject. Um, so now we also have to consider the light source. Our main light source. The sun. And the sun has a golden light. Um, like, without it, this is very stale lighting. Um, so we're gonna add some sort of gold, some, some gold dashes, some, some warm, some gold. 
Let's sort of see what we can do with it. When we're adding it like that, just on top, this sort of golden hue. Already, it feels like oh, this is uh, this is this is sunlight. This is actually something that's, and I'm not even doing anything. I'm just I just took this color, I just took this color and started painting on top of it. This isn't even on color mode. Well, yo, yeah, this is sorry. Um, <laughs> this skin looks extremely cursed. It doesn't look like skin right now, but this is just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. Um, this looks better. Okay. So already now you can tell that this cube exists in a space and it's being affected by a light source and it's being like it looks like it belongs there now and that's the point that's what realism painting realism is all about <laughs> it, it's understanding that light jumps around everywhere it hits the surface it bounces it hits the surface it bounces it the surface bounces it can, like you have to apply the rules of light. Light doesn't go like this, right? You can't paint a light source that does, that does this. Um, but you can paint a light source that does this, bow, and this, bow, and this, bow. Um, so yeah, uh, and because this is skin, just a fun fact. Um, oh. You can, um, you can saturate at the edge of, um, saturate at the edge of where the terminator is like this oh 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 look at that look at that and and this is this is part of the technique in how you create um what's it called subsurface scattering this is part of how you can very s simply indicate subsurface scattering it's just saturating where the where the terminator line is just saturated um i mean this is what the the color dodge tool does for you it highlights and saturates around the edges that's what color tool does um so you can essentially just paint a light color have a terminator line and saturate and you've basically color dodged that's how it works so that's good to know um <laughs> maybe i don't know <laughs> all right so now I want to show you something. I think it's time because I painted a picture, <laughs> a pretty little picture, and there it is. Hey guys, uh, it's me. I just wanted to say I made a few corrections to the piece you're seeing now, and this is actually the final piece. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, I went back and did a few corrections, and this is what it looks like now. Uh, so yeah, what you're seeing in the video is an old version. Um, before you murder me, this isn't supposed to be. This isn't supposed to be a blob replicate. This isn't supposed to look like something blob painted. This is supposed to be my own piece, but using the tools I picked up from looking at his pieces. And obviously, it's not perfect yet. I still have a lot to learn. I could still study ten hours more of his paintings, but this is just like trying to 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 use the hammer like what is he doing what is he thinking what kind of decisions i'm making um and right here you can sort of see everything that i've talked about up to this point you can see it put into action you can see the color theory we talked about of putting saturated versus cool tones um you know having um having respect in the the atmospheric light um you have atmosphere every, all of the sky that's atmospheric light just remember that that's atmospheric light and we have sky hitting here hitting here hitting here oh, like there hitting here hitting here uh, here and the hair and the leg right here and the dress and it's catching a bit on the arm as well and the hand down here and the railing here and you know it's everywhere it's everywhere and to contrast these very subtle cool tones, I decided to add a very golden tone because that's something Vlap does a lot. Um, add this gold, the golden light source somewhere out here. We don't need to see the light source. We just need to decide that it's there and respect how it behaves. Um, it's not like the light source here isn't shown in the picture, but I'm still respecting it. So it feels real still. Um, 
and we have all of these areas right here oh like this all of this all of these shapes all of this the the titty is getting a bit as well the neck uh, the cheekbone the ear the hair facing downwards um, the arm the hand the fingers all of this is facing the golden light source so that's what that's what's catching the gold and that's where the blue is neglected neglected because um, you know if you have a prioritizing list about what light you need to respect first the first thing is the light source first thing is light source and the second thing is the atmospheric light that's what comes second right so um, yeah that's just what you need to know. That's that's what he understands. So he understands a lot. I mean, Vlob honestly, he knows composition, he knows color theory, he knows anatomy, he knows, he knows a lot. But this is what he understands that makes his picture so believable: is understanding all this reflected light and how it works and how to utilize it in an interesting way, how to emphasize on it and exaggerate it in a way that creates beautiful pictures. Um, I also want to throw in a quick comment in on metal. Metal is probably the easiest thing you can ever paint in the entire world. I mean these dots, I mean I'm gonna show you how easy it is. Um, you take one light, metal is like a mirror, you just have to think metal is a mirror. So you just take whatever, whatever the metal is facing, you grab that color and you just go crazy. Um, to show you how, I'm just gonna I just did this essentially, like this, and then like that's blue from the sky, right? And then there's a light source over here, so I'm gonna grab that color and just dash it in like that. I mean, if we zoom out, that looks like metal. It looks like a mirror. It looks like it's 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 a hard surface material that's reflecting something, right? And that took two seconds. That took two seconds. Armor is a bit more difficult because intrinsic designs and all of that, but it's essentially the same exact deal. You just take whatever atmosphere is around it and apply it to it. And make sure to remember your hard surfaces and edges because metal is very hard, it's very edgy, it has a lot of hard edges. Um, so that's just what you need to remember. Um, and maybe bring in, like, if you want to go the extra mile, you can bring in some dark contrast around it like this, because metal has high contrast, because, again, it's so reflective, that's where the high contrast comes from. Like that, already it looks kind of nice, just adding some contrast to it. You can just, like, and I'm just doing little dots right now, I'm not really doing anything, really. Um, but it kind of works, I think. But yeah, um... I hope this helped you. Um, I mean, I mean, there's a lot of beginners. I I know what it's like being a beginner. It's not that long ago, actually. I've been studying for two or three years, maybe. I think it's two, but I've been taking it. Like I know what it's like to look at something like Vlob's paintings and be like. Oh my god, I could never do that. <laughs> if that, I can't do it. I'm sorry, art is not for me. You're not supposed to think like that, alright? You're not supposed to think like that. You're not supposed to look at some... It's not It's not magic. Art is not magic. You're not supposed to look at it and be like, Oh, I could never do that. It's not black magic. Rob didn't go out into the woods and sacrifice a virgin. And neither did I. It's not magic. <laughs> No one just wakes up and suddenly they have art knowledge. Suddenly they're an art god. It's not some cosmic paranormal force that can't be predicted. There's no Cthulhu deity throwing light in different directions, alright? It's a system. It's a pattern. It's a rule set. It's not magic, alright? It's math. It's science. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Bet you thought art was the opposite of math. That you wanted to draw so that you wouldn't have to do math and physics. <laughs> but you were wrong. <laughs> just like I was. And we suffered. We all suffered for it. <laughs> what you just have to remember is that what we do as artists when we paint is try to figure out how those rules of the universe work. 
Every brush stroke is an attempted guess at how the light and material on your subject behaves, and how well you understand your subject will help you make better, more successful guesses. Well, and more importantly, you'll be more able to tell with your eyes whether you guess correctly or not. As a beginner, you're not going to be able to do that. Um, but it, as a beginner, you're not going to be able to do that, which is why critique and feedback is so critical to your to developing your skills. But you know, it's a skill like any other you can develop with time. Um, but this is why you know painting is a two steps forward, one step back process because you're constantly guessing with your brushwork, getting some right, getting some wrong. You know, trying to carve out your piece. Um, and I know all of this physics and science and understanding atmospheric light and light physics. I, some people get overwhelmed by that. Um, but you know, if you think learning physics and science and the behavior of light and, and, and anatomy and biology, if you think that's boring, you should probably strap out because mastering art is an extremely scientific field, which everything we know composition like but it combines everything we know composition is science color and color theory is science anatomy is science light is science if you're trying to learn imaginary realism like drawing from your mind's eye something that's realistic and convincing um then essentially what you're trying to do is replicate reality from the power of your brain alone and that's an extremely demanding task and how are you ever gonna do any of that like, how are you gonna ever do replicate the reality of an arm, of an eyeball, or a sunset? How are you ever gonna do that if you have no idea how reality works, right? Like, you have to give yourself a fighting chance if you want to get good at it. You have to give yourself some good odds, man. Um, and understanding reality, understanding the universe is learning science, which goes back to everything I just mentioned. Composition and imaginary light, perspective, psychology, acting. Like, everything that goes into composing a scene, an image. Um, there's so much you have to learn, and if you want to get really good, I think it's very good if you can invigorate some kind of curiosity within yourself. You know, you have to be hungry. You have to be hungry, <laughs> like Les, Les Brown says. <laughs> be you gotta be hungry. <laughs> you have to be hungry and thirsty for learning, especially stuff that will help you express yourself in the way you want to. Um, and I'm gonna just. Throw in a disclaimer. I'm not a. I'm not a teacher. I don't consider myself a teacher at all. I'm. I'm still learning. I'm still learning a lot. I. I'm, I have a learning curve. Um, but you know, as a fellow student, <laughs> a fellow student of art, I want to help other people out. And I'm not. I'm not really an expert. But I've been doing this long enough to sort of definitely help out beginners. Um, and you know, I have a lot of friends in my family being like, "Oh, how are you doing this stuff?" And this is how I'm doing it. It's just understanding. This stuff, this is all it is. Um, is like at some point, art is. I'm not gonna brag and be like, art is easy for me, but some professionals are be. I, I, are like, at some point, art is gonna be easy. At some point, it's just gonna be easy. And that's just because they understand everything so well. They don't have to do a lot of wrong guesses in their brushwork. They're just getting it right because they understand it so well. Um, I just also want to throw it in there. Um, this is the how to draw like blob video because only blob can art like blob, you know. Um, in my piece, you can see a lot of technique and stylistic choice implemented, um, which is like inspired by what he does. But I can't draw like him because I'm not him. And even though I wanted to explore his style, I also wanted to have the freedom to kind of make my own creative decisions. An artist's style is like their identity. Um, it's like their fingerprint and it shows what they see in the world and what they want others to see and pay notice to too. But even though this isn't a how to vlog tutorial, you can still learn from him. We need to learn from the people that are better than us and know more than we do. And th I think learning from him to better understand light behavior is definitely something worth learning, you know. And like before you murder me <laughs> again. <laughs> I didn't make this to make it look exactly like something Vlob had painted. And even, even if I tried to do that, I would have failed. Even, even with artists that are extremely good and extremely good at replicating his style, you can still tell immediately when it's a Vlob picture and when it isn't. Which circles back to the whole, everyone has their own style, which is their identity deal. The purpose with this image for me was to take a peek inside the toolbox, like what kind of strokes are happening, what kind of brushes, you know, are, are, is he using a dry brush, a wet brush, or 
uh, you know, <laughs> Photoshop default round brush, uh, the surprising amount of soft brush I used in this, uh, just default soft brush I used in this picture, which is normally a big no-no, but still like, you know, but yeah, I just wanted to look at what kind of lighting decisions I made and, and make a journal for myself and, and share with people what I found, you know. Eye journaling is actually really fun. I really enjoy it. So I hope it's enjoyable for everyone as well. Um, I just also want to throw in there that I know Blob applies a lot of 3D and he's a really good modeler, which, which is completely fine. I'm not shaming that at all. Um, the last thing I want is a horde of angry Blob fans on my ass, okay? <laughs> but using 3D takes the guesswork out of a lot that is painting. So it makes it considerably easier. If you're a good 3D modeler, you can essentially make your own references, which is insanely valuable. Um, he still obviously understands a lot about light and color and composition, and so he'd probably still be a he'd probably still be art god without 3D. I'm just saying that it's definitely not hurting his art that he's utilizing it. I think that covers it for this video. Um, you know, I mentioned this kind of art journaling... Or, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> I can't speak today. Oh my god. This kind of art journaling is... Ex it's, it's really fun, actually. I enjoy it. Um, and I learn a lot from it. Um, and I kind of get these time capsules where I can look back and... Like, maybe in a year or three years or ten years, I can look back at this and be like, Oh yeah, oh my god, that was that time where I was <laughs> dumb artist that did no shit. <laughs> Something like that, you know, a time capsule thing, a memory lane thing, so it's really nice. Um, this Photoshop file, um, I'm actually gonna give it to you. I'm gonna upload it somewhere for you to download and use for whatever you want. Um, you can download it and look at the layers and, you know, play around with the colors, see what things does what. Um, you know, I added this little thing here. Um, so that you can see where where the sort of patches hitting different zones like you can see where I added this little layer so you can see where the different um, where the different uh, shapes are getting their color from you know there's all of these little things I'm showing this one is facing the light source this one's facing the sky and all of that um, so you can download this file for free and just use it um, Explore whatever you want with it, you know, fix around some stuff, try to play around with the colors, maybe you want to do something like this and see what it does to the picture. Um, so yeah, that's my my little gift from me to you. I, I hope I hope it makes you happy. <laughs> happy artist, yes. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll provide links in the description so you can find it. Um, then you can also find the finished picture on my social media and stuff. Um, I think that's it for me today. So you guys, are, well, you guys, you guys have a good one, right? Um, and I see, see you next time, maybe. Remember to subscribe, but only if you want to. <laughs> that would make me very happy. <laughs> but if you don't want to, it's okay. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.